Okay, folks, let's test this out. I think I got everything working over here, and uh, let's start the stream. Okay, sounds like we're running and getting going here. About time. Let's see here. Let's get this chain here. How's everybody doing tonight? I hope you're all having a great night and I appreciate everybody joining me on the live stream. Uh, I know I have uh, Maria watching and welcome Maria. And uh, if you're new to the stream right now, please drop your name into the chat. I'd like to see who we're talking to tonight and uh, have a fun little session tonight. Uh, it's uh, 2024 and uh, I thought I'd kick off uh, with a how-to storyboard uh live stream tonight and just sort of talk about the basics and the fundamentals of uh, live streaming or excuse me on storyboarding not live streaming but storyboarding and uh, have some fun with it and uh, if you're joining the chat for the first time uh, please drop your name in the chat I'd appreciate it to see who we're hanging out with tonight appreciate everybody jumping on if we haven't met before my name is Paul Angeli and I'm a live action storyboard artist and uh, I bring to you this YouTube channel as a, as a resource for you friends at home uh, to have some fun and to, to learn the art of storyboarding uh, if you're a artist a visual storyteller or a filmmaker uh, I invite you to join and subscribe to this channel I bring a uh, uh, weekly uh, content to you three times a week on Monday, or excuse me, Tuesdays, Thursdays, and Saturdays. And uh, I'm here to be a resource for you. I share my journey and my uh, process of what I've learned in storyboarding and bring it to you uh, from all my experiences and uh, what I'm currently doing today. So I hope that uh, gives you a hand. Please consider subscribing. Uh, this, this content is a resource for you to help you learn and grow. Um, and uh, I enjoy uh, putting on this uh, live stream each and every week, and uh, it, it's fun to me. I have a lot of friends come up to me, uh, just chit ch chat about backgrounds and past. I used to teach uh, at the university level as an instructor, and a lot of folks uh, over the over the years have asked me, "Hey, listen, Polly, come on, teach us some stuff. Uh, go back to teaching." So I'm using this uh, YouTube channel as a as a place to teach and share my experiences and process and my passion uh, for filmmaking, animation, comics, etc. Uh, it's all fun stuff for me, and I, I really enjoy talking about it. I enjoy teaching about it, and I enjoy the process of creating art especially visual story storytelling and telling stories through images um, so if that's the type of thing you're into too come on join our community over here and uh, we can have some fun with this so again if you're uh, joining the channel for the first time uh, drop your name in the chat I appreciate it and uh, let me give you my contact information right here uh, let's see where that so let's boom. You, again, my name is Paul Angeli. I'm a live action uh, storyboard artist. You can reach me at if you have a either a, a, a job inquiry or a contact uh, to want to get in touch with me. You can e, uh, reach me at mr.paul.angeli uh, dot com, uh, and uh, that's my website. Excuse me, mr.paul.angeli at gmail.com, excuse me, was my email address. And uh, my website's at paul, P-A-U-L-A-N-G-E-L-I.com. It's my website. And uh, you can catch me on Instagram on my handle. Uh, that's there. And then also here on the YouTube channel. So I'm going to check on the chat, see who else, who else we have uh, hanging out with us tonight. I got my buddy Tornado T. How's it going, Tornado T? And I got her Andreas back. How are you doing, Andreas? Good to see everybody hanging out uh, tonight and having a good time. Uh, a few folks uh, have been popping in and out, and I appreciate everybody uh, 
coming in on the stream and hanging out with me tonight. Um, so good stuff. So I uh, got, got, got the same group of community of folks super interested. So I really appreciate you taking the time out of your busy day to come and hang out with me on the live stream here on the live stream. And if you're catching us on the replay, hey, no harm, no foul. I just sort of have this time set aside for myself uh, three times a week so I can hang out and do the live stream. And if you're catching this on the replay, thanks for watching the replay. Um, and uh, please, if this is uh, giving you some great value on the replay, please subscribe. I'd really appreciate it. That's how you can support me back. Uh, don't forget to click the bell notification button so uh, I can notify you when uh, my next video posts. And, you know, I always appreciate the likes and comments. They help to support and grow this channel. And uh, I got a lot of friends on tonight. I know I have Maria, Tornado T, Andreas and others are going to be jumping and popping in. So again, if this is your first time on the stream, drop your name in the chat. Let me know who's hanging out with us. we got a lot of good friends here in terms of what we're doing. Um, again, let me share with you quickly uh, my weekly schedule that I have going on so far. We've been going really strong for the last uh, three months. This is uh, just starting month number four and uh, you know, I, I, I've been having a great time with these live streams. I think there's over 35 live streams uh, for your viewing pleasure uh, for some great valuable information on storyboard and the visual arts. Uh, and let me tell you quickly about uh, the process that I have going on, the programming I have throughout the week. Um, on Tuesdays, you will find uh, days like today, which are storyboarding, mastering the basics. So with the mastering the basics series is my sort of um, how-to tutorial uh, demonstration of uh, the craft of storyboarding. Uh, right now, I've been focusing on the basics. Right now, we'll get into all different uh uh, fun different aspects of storyboarding, whether it be live action, animation, uh, other other formats of visual storytelling as well, comic book, sequential art, those type of things. But right now we're sort of focusing on the basics. I think I think since it was the start of the of 2024, and there's a lot of new people, I'm going to be going over a couple things I think are great foundational basics uh, for you new and budding storyboard artists to learn from. And then on Thursdays, we have our sketching after hours session. And I can't stress this enough. Um, yeah, as a storyboarder, storyboard artist, we draw and we draw for a living. We create stories. And I think it's so important to have a sketchbook, to be sketching. And I know a lot of you friends out there have been sketching like crazy. You're sharing your work with me. And I really appreciate that. And uh, you've been coming a long way with your sketching and uh, the way you're drawing. So again, keep that sketchbook each and every day. Try to you know commit yourself. We were talking about uh, on our first live stream in 2024, take massive action. You know, if this is something you want to pursue, you got to put a lot of energy and time into this uh, craft. Uh, and there's so much. We're going to be talking about those things that you should be working on um, as you get started. But a sketchbook is super important to have and sketch every day. So. Um, Join us for that sketching after hours for how to sketch and I go over tutorials, how to draw figures, heads, those type of things. Uh, you know, I think we did a, uh, one that took off was eyes, just drawing eyes. That was a lot of fun. Then on Saturdays, we do our storyboard jam sessions and uh, those are those are quite fun. Uh, I have a good time doing those uh, jam sessions. This I, 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 I uh, we worked on a roller derby and uh, the art of roller derby, the sport of roller derby that started off in 1935 in Chicago. So we had a really great jam session this past Saturday. And I've been still working on the, the, putting the final boards together for a, for a sequence of, uh, you know, uh, a roller derby sort of sequence. And I've been having fun with it. I sort of just took it under as a sort of a side project and having fun with that. And uh, we, you know, we were talking about the importance of doing your research when you're storyboarding. So, and uh, knowing about the topic, I had no idea. It was given to me as a challenge to do a, a you know, roller derby. I learned so much about it. And I've watched so much film and, and uh, game matches and stuff for, uh, and I have a lot of respect out there. So if you're into roller derby or you're a roller derby, uh, 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 one of the gals out there doing roller derby, man, uh, props to you. You know, that, that's a tough sport and uh, it, it looks like a lot of fun and uh, it, it's, a, it's a great, uh, great thing to watch. I have to get to one of these games, one of these uh, these matches, one of these days. Uh, pretty popular stuff. But anyways, we're back to what we're talking about. Um, three days a week, Tuesday, Thursdays and Saturdays, we sort of hang out and have some fun. 
um, and uh, do that. Let me check the chat real quick, and then we'll see what we're going to get into today. HMT, how you doing? Lunch breaks <laughs> and watch your live stream. Cool. Hey, I appreciate it. Anytime you can jump on an HMT, I don't want you to get in trouble at work or anything. So uh, jump on uh, to the replay. I'd appreciate it. Uh, you know, just watching and, and stuff. So today, let me go over here to uh, my Photoshop screen. Let's get rid of Big Polly. Any questions out there? I was just curious uh, before we get into the sort of our chat tonight about how to storyboard. Um, any anything questions out there? Anything uh, I, before I get into the chat real quick? I'll leave it up. Uh, leave it right there. If there's anything anybody wants to add, I'll take a sip of my drink here while I'm waiting there. Cool, let's see here. Anybody on the chat? Cool. Okay, well, let's get going. If there's nobody on the chat or has anything to say, I'm going to go to Little Polly. Boop. Let's pop him up. Boop, turn Big Paul off. Okay, there we go. We're in Photoshop now. So, um, storyboarding. I love this craft. And um, the reason why I got into it was... Uh, you know, of all things, it was a challenge. Uh, um, I've always been in, in the graphic arts, and I started off as a uh, animator and illustrator and comic book artist when I first started in, in the sort of the entertainment side of uh, doing this work. And, uh, you know, I, I really had a, a passion. You know, you sit there and go, I was really excited to become a doctor. And uh, when, before, when, I went, when I was off uh, through high school and... Uh, you know, getting into college, I always drew all the time, but I, I never saw it as, as something I was going to get into. But, uh, you know, uh, and uh, it was sort of interesting that uh, I had one computer course. It was a computer animation course in college. And uh, and it was simple. It was it wasn't uh, you know, I wasn't going to an art school or art college or anything like that. And I I took one computer art course and uh taught myself how to animate. Uh, I, I think at the time I was, I was animating in Macromedia Director. Uh, and that was, uh, you know, uh, that was uh, for Macromedia back in the way early 90s. And, and Photoshop had just come out and, uh, you know, in the late 80s, right at the 90s, right there, learned that too. Became really proficient with Photoshop really quick. Illustrator, that whole Adobe package of different software and stuff. And, uh, you know, I was doing a lot of uh, illustrations and uh, working for packaging designs and uh, ad mock-ups and things like that and uh, learned uh, animation and uh, started doing a lot of, uh, you know, traditional cell animation and learning, you know, as much as I could uh, because the program I was in was more on television, uh, video and film production rather than uh, animation. So I had to, uh, I went out and got the, the book of The Illusion of Life and uh, started teaching myself, uh, you know, uh, 2D, you know, textbook, uh, Disney, you know, animation and uh, worked on comics too. I was a big comic fan at the time. And uh, that that was, you know, uh, not quite even the time when uh, Image Comics was starting to hit. Everything was just starting to come out and uh, and uh, follow that track. Worked on a lot of interactive comic books. I think we've spoken to before about, you know, uh, a few of the books I've worked on and stuff like that in the past. Watched some of the past uh, live streams. But I got my start that way. And... and uh, my direction, you know, went a few different ways, and my 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 it was my boys who challenged my challenged me and said it, we were watching a movie and like Dad, you could do this, you know, uh, why don't you go and uh, make some movies or something like that? I said so I took them up on the challenge and uh, taught myself everything I needed to know about storyboarding, and uh, worked through a couple of programs as well. But, uh, you know, I had some fun doing it. And I love it. I, I love telling stories. And I think the, the, the funnest part, because I, I've made a lot of films myself, too, and music videos and things like that as a director. But it's like, I love uh, storyboarding because, you know, you're thinking like a director. You're working with directors or you're working with clients and you're, you're putting the blueprint of these projects together. And it's so exciting. Uh, you're, you're, in a sense, you're like the uh, the... the the, the camera cameraman right there holding the camera you take you see like the camera 
and um, we were we were going into that uh, conversation. Uh, I think it was Saturday, and we were talking about, or it was on last Thursday. We we're talking about the difference between comic book layout and artwork versus you know storyboarding. And, and I love storyboarding sequences because you're 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 literally just you see the film inside your own head with the direction of the the the, the shooting script, the vision of your director. Uh, you're 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 there to to help them uh, envision the movie and uh, and you put those uh, those shots together that you're creating for your storyboards and then eventually they'll get edited together into an animatic with some sound and voiceover and and that's pretty much your first rendition of the film and a lot of today's big films and uh, uh, television uh, streaming shows whether it's uh, you know. Uh, uh, you know the the winter the, the winter soldier series falcon the winter soldier or it's uh you know new stuff coming out daredevil or you know whatever these sh these shows are coming out or something like uh you know even napoleon you know storyboarding is always a critical part of all these projects because uh, it's it's quickly we can put these storyboards together and uh, get a vision of what the film is going to be. And, uh, you know, there's all different ways to approach it. But I think the storyboard artist is a pinnacle uh, person or group or team together working on uh, these projects uh, to get these uh, to get the vision. It's, it creates the blueprint. And that's what makes me so excited about uh filmmaking and about storyboarding is that this is something that is a very collaborative uh, creative um, business and you're doing your part and it can go all different ways and that's what I'm creating storyboards I don't fall in love with each of the images I'm creating but there's a lot of thinking and that goes behind storyboarding that you don't usually get to see you get to see the sign like this image right here you get to see the final uh, this this image here or whatever it is and uh, you don't get to see all the work well I broke down this particular shot I did and I drew up earlier today uh, for the thumbnail for this uh, particular live stream but I, I'll show you the process uh, from the, the basic sketch and uh, thumbnail drawing all the way to the, the finished format of what we're talking about here so uh cool stuff cool to see uh but that's what makes me passionate about this uh this craft and, and sharing it with you uh today so um i think storyboarding is uh an important part of the uh filmmaking process uh whether it be feature animation or filmmaking or uh, a streaming uh, cartoon show um, you know, a music video, a corporate video, your YouTube videos, um, or whatever you're doing, even if you're doing a, a family vacation type of video too. Um, but I, but I think storyboarding is important because it's, it's, it, you're, you're establishing the creative workflow, uh, you know, um, in terms of, of the direction and the storyboard artist is is putting that blueprint together that's going to be passed off to the actors it's going to be passed off to the the stunt coordinators it's going to be passed off to the special effects unit it's going to be passed off to all the different departments that everybody is working a, a team of creators uh, that are working together so everybody knows what's going on you're going to have those storyboards uh and sometimes uh you're working with the director sometimes you have the cinematographer working with you maybe the production designer is there working with you and, and you're putting these initial uh concept drawings together of these shots to figure out where, where what's the composition of the shot what's the aspect ratio where is the camera moving how's is it panning is it pushing in is it pulling out uh what is that shot and you're doing all that thinking because time is money and you know you don't uh, I doubt there's any crew out there that is going out there and, and has a camera set up and with mi millions of dollars and just and wings it. Um, uh, you go out there and you have a plan and the, it's the director's vision of what you're trying to do. And, you know, I, I see a lot of if you uh, see a lot of films out there uh, or storyboard artists, they'll actually have the boards up for the shots that they're, they're, that they're scheduled to shoot that day. And it gets everybody on the same, um, in a sense, the, the game plan. It's your strategy for the day. And it gets everybody on the same game plan. There's, there's 
yeah, there's room for interpretation and iteration to it, but everybody's focused on those are the shots we need to tell the story, to push the story along of what we're trying to do. So, um, Andrea said National Lampoon Family Vacation. <laughs> okay, so cool. Um, anywho, anywho um, it's pretty much like I said, it, it's, the, it's the vision. It's the vision plan. It's the blueprint of, uh, you know, what you're trying to do. So let me go back over here to Photoshop real quick. Let's turn this layer off. And let's turn our layer of the picture frame. So everything is, uh, when we're storyboarding, you know, everything that we're creating is uh, within a picture frame. And uh, that would be right here. Um, let me zoom this a little bit. So everything is going to be on this picture frame of uh, the storytelling that we're going to be doing. And let's move this down like that. And, uh, you know, there, there's different. So this is a. Uh, if you're new to storyboarding, this would be your, your, let me get a couple colors up here. Get this down a little bit. Okay, a little layer. Okay, so this would be, let me see how big this is. That would be your picture frame right there. And I sort of, I like working letterbox sometimes. It all depends on, uh, you know, what your aspect ratio is. I sort of have it in an HD setting right now. So this would be the, the HD setting right here to right here would be, and then I put in some you know some black bars in there for letterbox to have some fun with it um, a lot of times uh, you'll sometimes you'll see um, maybe it'll it'll show you uh, what scene you all the information you have what's up you know up here it might be, be like a what, what sequence or what's the film sequence, all your information, and your shot, you know, sometimes I'll come back here, I'll just be shot, it'll be sh shot one, or one A, you know, it'll be the shot, um, depending on what it is, too, you might have, uh, you know, little extra boxes on uh, some of this, this, the, the sort of the template, template, template styles uh, no matter what you're what you're doing maybe you might have some sound what it what is the the script in terms of uh, what you're doing but the live area that we're drawing in is, is either going to be through here or through here and what I and what you're doing and you know we you know there's a lot of uh, directors out there that use storyboarding as as a tool uh, to tell their vision and you'll have um, directors like uh, Steven Spielberg uh, uh, Zemeckis uh, you know uh, it, would, it would be like Alfred Hitchcock if you've seen any of the storyboards for the birds or um, uh, you know, Close Encounter of a Third Kind or Raiders of Lost Ark or, you know, these directors will go and literally draw thumbnails of all their shots and have it sort of pre-figured out uh, before they might go into pre or they actually start shooting the movie. Uh, you know, uh, Peter Jackson, uh, you know, from the Lord of the Rings uh, trilogy of films, you know, um, Fanta you know, making sure that everything was storyboarded and, uh, you know, another another director that we that is quite popular, you know, Sir Ridley Scott, you know, just came out with Napoleon. And I think a lot of his uh, uh, he, he was an artist by by nature as well and would draw out uh, with simple line art and color uh, uh, drew out all all the images and the shots he saw in his head for Napoleon, you know, uh, art, you know, so the you'll see a lot of directors that already have those fundamental art skills and, and sort of have that shot. And uh, what they'll do is they'll pass it on. 
to uh, another uh, storyboard artist to have it completed and or doll up the, 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 the story, maybe add mood uh, or lighting or something else uh, to get the story that they need uh, to tell their story. And, and it's quite exciting to see so many directors out there. And so, um, and, and a, lot of, a lot of backgrounds too, a lot of storyboard artists eventually become directors. And you'll see uh, a lot of artists out there uh, that, that uh, were once storyboard artists and now they're producing, uh, you know, uh, big budget, big box office films. So um, it, it's, a, it's a pretty interesting uh, segue because you've already figured it all out. Uh, you're just learning how to, uh, you just get on a, a different part of the pipeline of getting it done from there. But uh, and it's an excellent uh, way to go in and start directing as well. So turn big Paul off, go back to little Paul. So the other thing too about storyboarding is it doesn't need to be fancy drawings. Uh, I'll have something like what I what I had drawn, and uh, but it's not always like this all the time, you know. Um, and a lot of these directors we were talking about, um, they might even just have a, a simple, you know, line drawing, you know, or, or a simple s simple drawing. This you know this character here is is handing a box to this character over here or something like that and they just have that the shot you know figured out already you know and it, it's really rudimentary so you don't need to be some fantastic illustrator in terms of what you're doing and I, I tend to when I'm when I'm boarding and I'm here I'm, I'm doing thumbnails here on the YouTube channel and uh, you know uh, uh, I'll, I'll sit there and I'll just uh, thumbnail it out real quick because uh, your images need to be disposable. You know, if, if uh, somebody says, hey, Paul, I, I don't want the shot like that. I want the, the shot to be the reverse of that or whatever it might be. I need to be able to, uh, or I just want the shot different. Maybe it's a, it's a bird's eye view and that character is handing the box to that person because we want to have a, a you know, a, di a different angle in the shot. And I, I can't fall in love with that. And I need to, when I'm reading the, the say I, I'm working on a project and I'm reading the shooting script and I'm, I'm talking to the director, I read the script and I try to read it as many times as I can. Uh, maybe the shot list uh, has already been created. Uh, maybe there's nothing. And I'm visually coming up with the ideas for this uh, a particular, maybe it might just be, uh, be a, a the, the sequence just says, action scene and that's the point of the, of the scene so um you know all you got to be able to to not fall in love with those uh ideas as you're throwing them down and i think it's really important as a storyboard artist that you're 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 reading the material you're talking to your director you're asking a lot of questions and even if even if it's the silliest of questions you're going to ask more questions to make sure you're right on point because we're here to uh, provide a service for the director or your client uh, you want to make sure that you have their vision in mind and the story that you're trying to tell and there's different ways that you can do a shot to tell the story uh, some directors already know exactly where they want to go Others, they just need a little bit of help. It might be a new director, you know, or a new filmmaker, and you're working with them and you're giving them ideas. We're here to solve problems as a storyboard artist. So, um, you know, and then uh, Maria was just asking, uh, what is the aspect ratio call? Uh, what, uh, this would be a, for, for general, for my HD, it would be a 16 by nine aspect ratio. And, those would be that would be one of the questions I would ask, you know. Um, and there's lots of things out there. We might do a tutorial. Uh, I'm going to write that down a tutorial on aspect ratios. We could talk about that, um, you know, in, in terms of you know, what, what is it for you know, TV, which letterbox, what are all these different aspect ratios? Because that would be another question I'd ask my the director is what's the aspect ratio, you know. Um, you know, are we working in a cinema cinemascope cinema uh, aspect ratio? You're looking at something like uh, the hate uh, Tarantino's The Hateful Eight, or something like that, where you have these really extreme, 
uh, you know, wide angle shots, extreme wide angles, and how, how do you go about that? So that's one of those questions I would ask too. And so you're properly formatting your, your shots or your drawings to fit the aspect ratio of what your client is asking for. So I wrote that down, Maria. We'll do a, a quick little, I'm, I'm about ready to do a lot of, uh, I got some videos that I've been producing already, uh, and we'll go over those uh, different things. Um, so um, we were talking about the, the simplicity of sort of the basic breakdown of a script um, or the uh, storyboards. Let's talk about real quick. Let's talk about um, throw a new layer. Before I do that, let me just go in there and I'll show you some boards. I have some stuff. So, um, so when you're storyboarding, Turn that other layer off real quick so it's not in the way. So when I'm coming up with uh, ideas, and, and different artists work in different ways. And um, I tend to, to practice a lot uh, on my sketching. I usually use um, a Sharpie and a, uh, a Sharpie and a, uh, just a regular pen. Um, other times, so I'll use something like these. I use a mechanical pencil or my number two pencil uh, for shading and those type of things as I'm drawing. And uh, what I'll do is I'll sit there and I'll just come up with um, my storyboards and I'll just quickly thumbnail like this. And uh, sometimes uh, if, I'm, if I'm reading the shooting script, I'll go ahead and just, as I'm reading the script and coming up, see it in my mind's eye. Uh, if you want to go back onto my Mastering the, the Basic series on that playlist, and I go from uh, starting you off with a, uh, a film script and going all the way to the animatic. So uh, I'm gonna read that storyline and uh, I'm going to read that story so many times I'm going to figure out I'm going to highlight all those characters or actions or events or props or effects or stunts or whatever's going on within that script. Uh, and I'll start thumbnailing. And sometimes, uh, you know, I'll do some thumbnails that look like this on the borders of that particular script. I'll be putting my questions together. I haven't done any research yet. Uh, and that's a that's a critical part of my storyboarding process too. Is I'll do some research. Like we were given the example of the uh, the roller derby. I, I wasn't familiar with roller derbies or roller derby girls, and and so I did a lot of research on how does the, what are the how does how does the sport work? How what are the rules? What are the penalties? How do you score points? What's the difference between a jammer and a, and the pivot? And and the and the uh, and and the different positions within there, the blockers, and uh, you know how does that all work, and how do you how do you how do you win? So um, part of the storyboard process is, is doing those thumbnails and uh, getting those thumbnails. So this is an example of, of some of the thumbnails. Um, other things that I'll do too. Turn that off. Besides the thumbnails, I'll do um, the the basic uh, line art. Of what I'm doing too. So this is a, a an example of sort of a, a, a western shot here, and it's like it's a medium shot because it's from the or the cow. It's a little bit. Uh, I would it's a little bit close to a medium shot or cowboy shot right here. Um, you got your. Uh, you get to see a little bit of the background on there. You see his horse. You got some sort of train or something in the back here, uh, and this is pretty much just a, a line art image. And then um, here is some basic uh, light. It's the same line art, but maybe it's just some gray tones. It's like you know three or four gray tones in there. Uh, give me some, uh, give me some. Uh, what do you call it? Environmental uh, lighting and stuff like that. So cool. Um, Spicer, what's going on? Spicer just joined in. What's going on, Warriors? Hope you're all doing well, brother Paul. Cool. I'm doing great. Thanks for joining in, Spicer. Appreciate everything. Uh, Maria, I hope that helped to answer your question too about the aspect ratio, 16 by nine aspect ratio. Uh, and uh, that's sort of the HD uh, that I was using right now uh, for that particular sequence. But we talked about the thumbnails. Uh, we're talk talking sort of the line art. Um, let's sort of talk about uh, a process before we go into the next thing. So like I said, we have our uh, our storyboard panels here, and then um, 
I'll give you the, the shot that I had on the, th the thumbnail. Let's sort of break that one down a little bit. Just sort of show, to show you my sort of process on that. Cool. Cool. Awesome, Maria. Thanks. Okay, so let's do the first shot. So I, I did this quick sketch. So you can sort of, when I'm doing um, thumbnails and things like that, I might do a simple sketch like this. This is all it is. I'll go on to the next sketch. And just this is something I knock out in a couple minutes. It's like, doo -doo 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 -doo. you know, uh, I did get rid of all my lines, you know, in it, which are my, you know, my circle and my lines to, to dictate where everything is in the shot. Um, and I sort of went to my line art from there. And then uh, as I go through the process, I'll add a little bit more detail of something I want to focus on within that shot. So I went from here to here in my artwork in terms of my passes. I start adding some, some blacks and some color in there too and uh, just getting it in there and getting it working and having some fun with it. Uh, and this is sort of what I put together for the, the, the show here, the live stream. And then I'll go from there. Boop. I'll start adding some, uh, some more values and some shading. I'll use some different brushes in it uh, to add some stuff. And then I'll sit there and go, well, it doesn't look right, it's, you know, or something like that. And then uh, I will go on to the uh, final image. Boop. And there was the final image from everything that I created. So um, sort of gives you a, a quick little overview of my sort of process. You know, if I'm finalizing a shot, maybe, you know, use this for a portfolio. Um, maybe it might be an advertisement or a commercial or something like that. Uh, something a little bit fancier uh, in terms of what I'm doing. Uh, so again, let's go back on those images. So a lot of the work I'm doing is I'll keep it really simple like this and I'll, I can, I can, I just use a, I think my, I'm just using a regular uh, hard round brush. I think I got it at a four point um, in terms of what I'm doing. Um, I, I work different ways. I'll either have uh, all my panels, uh, all, all my shots laid out on one big grid uh, or I might uh, have, do it one shot at a time and sort of I'll go back and forth of a multitude of different ways um, in terms of what I'm doing. Sometimes I, I already see it in my head and I just want to get it out there and get it get a rough. I want to sort of put it together uh, and uh, sort of edit it real quick and sort of watch it and see how, how it's moving and flowing. And I think uh, that's that's a big difference uh, between uh, storyboarding and comic books is in a comic book, I'm going to be going. Uh, I'm going to be going from because uh, uh, a comic book is all about the design of the layout, the page itself. I'm going from uh, Western comics are going from top to bottom, left to right, boop 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 boop, and it, there's a lot of designing into it. But you're only doing like a keyframe in a sense, and you're not doing every shot, and because you're you're, when you're reading the comic, your brain is coming up with what was in between in that gutter, that white spot. Your brain is coming up to the other, to the next shot. And it's going, okay, uh, he's starting to throw a punch and bam, and then, and then, and then the shot hits, okay? Um, your mind is coming up with that as you're reading the comic book. And with storyboarding, there is no gutter. You need, there is no layout on the page. There is no design of, the, of, of what it is. It's you have a shot, next shot, next shot, next shot. So if I'm going to go and I'm going to take a drink, I'm going to see my drinks on the counter. My hand's going to come over. I'm going to get my drink, take a drink. I have, I have to show it all, you know, and, um, that's a big difference between, uh, you know, if we're talking about story beats versus, you know, the final boards, you know, but um, 
where we're showing what's happening, where, where's everything going. And you're thinking of the, of the edits and the cuts between uh, the shots and how, how to tell the story in that sequence. And sometimes it even gets more complicated because if I'm working on a, a se you know, part of the sequence and I have another peer working on another part of the sequence and our, we have to sort of blend it all together and you need to be over communicating to make sure that uh, you know, we're, we're telling that story. Let me go back over here to Photoshop. So a lot of the work that I that I do, like I said, is like sort of at this this level. You know, if I'm submitting that work, there might be some basic gray tones, blacks, and maybe a couple different grays on it. I don't think I have. I think that's even too complicated. I think this one is like up on top now is too complicated, and only rarely do I do something to that level of detail for a final board um, in terms of what, you know how I'm doing it, how I'm drawing it and stuff. I have some other boards here to show you too. Uh, turn that off. Let's talk about this here. Hold these off. And you can sort of see the difference between something on a grayscale. So I have the and this is uh, showing some some basic uh, movement of the uh, character within the shot. And so um, right now it's like the T-Rex is, is moving through the shot. Uh, I got a close-up of his eye, so sort of a, a medium shot of that, that T-Rex. You know, the eye is moving, so in the board I use a red line to show that the, the line is moving, uh, or the eye is moving, and that uh, the T-Rex then goes, turns his head, has that there. Whoops, I am so sorry. I just noticed that I am using the wrong screen. Let's talk about that again. Let's go back over here. Come on, big paw. Get out of there. Boop. Let's go, little paw. Boop, wrong one. Boop, there we go. Okay, now we can see what we're talking about. Trying to make it interesting as we're drawing here, so. <laughs> Thanks, Mr. Grinch. Caught it, caught it. I caught myself as I was watching myself there going, oh, man, I didn't put up my image. Hold on. I'm trying to make it interesting by changing the shots <laughs> a little bit, but uh, I forgot about that. But thanks, Mr. Grinch, for catching me on that one. Awesome. Okay, so uh, one more time we are talking about uh, this dino sequence here. Cool. Yeah, not a problem. You're welcome. Okay, so I got uh, sort of a, not necessarily a medium shot, but a close, close shot up of this uh, particular uh, T-Rex coming through the scene. I got the red arrow signifying uh, that the T-Rex is moving within the shot from uh, screen left to screen right. Uh, we do a close-up of his eye and the eye is swinging from left to right. And then uh, in shot three we have the T-Rex turning his head and letting out a horrible growl or roar and uh, shot four here, uh, we see that T-Rex clomping away, coming in that shot. And then uh, we have uh, two soldiers here, uh, completely freaked out. And you can sort of see a little bit different uh, process here um, in terms of what we're doing there. Um, and this, uh, with this, uh, sometimes with this particular sequence, I didn't draw it in there, but let me change it real quick. Add a new layer. And what we can what we can do too is we can go like this. We're pushing in to that particular uh, shot here, so we're gonna see this shot here. We're going to push in from that sort of medium shot to a close-up shot of the reaction. So this is what we're trying to do with the camera. So we're going from like right here to that close-up shot right there. Okay, to see those characters like, oh my gosh, what's going on there? Okay. And then we have... Our T where T Rex thump 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 going across the screen, camera right, camera left. 
you know, swinging around. So, or I could have went the other way or sw swung that back around because he was already going left to right. Um, could have corrected that too. So anyway, um, some other things that we can do here too is uh, when we're moving that camera, let's go like this. I have that first shot. Let's find that shot again. And there's another direction that we can give too. Um, sometimes uh, folks will do this. So if I'm a uh, I might show a pan, and the pan means that the camera is moving across. Is the ca the camera is panning and tracking with that particular dinosaur? I can also uh, show a tilt as well too. You know, I can tell, so you're, you're giving direction and where that camera is going. And uh, sometimes, uh, you know, they, they'll do different things too. They'll say camera and write that uh, verbiage in there. But some, there's, there's a lot you can do with camera angles and uh, camera movement with the arrows as well. So... Okie dokie. Get back up my picture frames. So let's talk a little bit more about storyboarding and uh, ha having fun with this uh, this medium. Um, so storyboard your illustrations uh, will have a lot to do with the the angles. Uh, this you know uh, what are the shots. Uh, how's the camera moving? Um, you know, how, how you know, how is the actor going to work in the sequence in terms of uh, blocking and, and where where the shot is? Um, and and that's where storyboarding comes into into big play a lot. Let me go back to this thumbnail shot. It says you're designing and you're putting your storyboards together. It's doing all that that thinking, and like I said, it's the blueprint of what your final uh, film could be. Um, and and pretty much what we're doing is we're watching this from shot to shot to shot. And uh, a lot of uh, uh, folks, um, and when I'm thinking about storyboarding, let me get rid of this shot now. Is let me write that down here. Okay. Get a happier color. Sort of blah. So storyboarding. It's the blueprint. I'm just going to use film reference right now. It's the blueprint for the film. Uh, it gets... everyone on the same page. It 
it gets everyone on the same page. Um, it reduced costs. Because there's a plan. Helps other on the creative team. do their jobs. For example, um, actors So an actor knows where the camera is for their parts, and it shows them, uh, where, and, and this is part of the, the storytelling and the filmmaking process uh, that you as a storyboard artist will have to convey. Uh, if it's something super dramatic, you're not going to do, um, if it's something like something where there, there's a close um, uh uh, exposition that the actor has to, to, to act out and and have emotion and depth to the scene to close the scene out you're not going to do it in a mid shot or a wide angle shot you're going to be up there really close because that close up shot is the is it's the it's the you know or you get the eyes really close or that super close up or you know extreme close up of the eye or whatever you know i just say the close up shot is going to give you the most emotional impact of that shot we don't want to see somebody down the street crying we want to get right there or we want to be intimate with that particular actor and 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 you have to put that into your storyboards as well. So there's a lot, uh, and we'll talk about the, just the aspects that make it, you know, that you need to work on as a new storyboard artist. And, you know, uh, you, you're not going to do a huge emotional shot you, in a wide angle shot where you barely see the characters only that big, you know. Uh, you you want to be right there. You want to be, oh man, I'm, you want to feel empathy for that particular character. So you have to be very, um, uh, uh, figured out these these plans you know in terms of uh, what, what you're doing um, sometimes uh, you know when you're uh, when you're on set you know um, you'll see the the, the big board a uh, big board set up and you'll see all the the storyboards set out for the, the shots that they're trying to convey. And let's just uh, grab this real quick. You'll see all the storyboard shots. Set up and then the act the you know the, the director will be there. You know, telling the, the, the cast and crew, you know, what's what's going on for the day. And everybody will be paying attention to to what's going on. Now, uh, these are the shots we're going to need for today, and uh, and that's where these storyboards go. Um, the other thing, we, you know, just on uh, as I'm talking, uh, you know, uh, different things to share too is like uh, sometimes uh, 
when, when I go to deliver my boards, I'm just delivering them in a um, either a, a single shot uh, or they might be on, on a so many up on a page, but it's usually a single shot that are delivered. Uh, there's naming convention and then uh, because what happens is sometimes uh, uh, certain directors, they don't want to see the animatic. They have an animatic team putting together all those storyboard shards. So Paul's in charge of this sequence. Uh, Joe is in charge of that sequence. Sarah is in charge of that sequence. Uh, uh, Mary Beth is in charge of that sequence. And we're all working together um, to put this together. And, um, and, and it's left up to interpretation, too, because... Um, that's where I'm saying you can't fall in love with the, the shots that you're creating in your sequence because somebody might have a better shot or uh, the director might say, hey, Paul, I need you to go and redo this shot. Uh, I need it, uh, uh, the character coming in from screen right and not screen left, or can I get this particular? So you, so you need to know uh, your, 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 you know, your filmmaking knowledge. You need to have it really strong. You need to know uh, what's an over-the-shoulder shot. What is a cowboy shot? What is a... Um, you know, a close-up versus a, versus a wide-angle shot or an extreme wide-angle shot. Uh, what's a bird's-eye view? You know, you need to know all your different shots and how to get those angles in terms... Maybe there's a great reveal, so we need to do uh, a tilt or something. Or, you know, what, what is what are we trying to do? So you need to know, have that filmmaking language on there. We'll talk about that uh, towards the end of our little chat here. But uh, a lot of the times the... Um, you know, uh, the, the storyboard artists uh, will create the shots, um, they'll get delivered, uh, there might be somebody putting the animatic or that particular storyboard artist uh, is the animatic or putting the animatic together, uh, some, and then maybe it'll go even to previs or either a 3D previs or a, you know, you have a huge fight sequence and the uh, the stunt the stunt team will be working all together to put you know just a basic uh, rough footage together of how that sequence can play out. So there's multiple different ways, and that's the difference between something that's a storyboard uh, in terms of what you're doing. It helps that team figure out what those shots are, and then it goes maybe into a previs or an animatic, so we can watch the full movie from beginning to end, add a little score, add some sound to it, um, and and see that. So see that in different styles of genres whether it be a, a, a you know a feature animation or it might be a live action you can see some of those animatics uh, beautiful work done where they'll go and they'll do uh, pretty much just rudimentary uh, you know animation with some 3d backgrounds and you'll see that get put together in that previs uh, and, and all that work in that pre-production so the storyboard artist is super important uh, position in terms of making the film because you're putting all the first visual uh, imagery together and then the director can uh, work with the editor or whichever way and sort of get that and harness that those image that imagery together to start sort of pre-planning the film uh, and like I said directors like Spielberg uh, Peter Jackson you know uh, uh, you know uh, uh, and others just just uh, just doing a great job um, in terms of uh, putting that visual storytelling together um, so we talked about the picture box, we talked about um, arrows and those directions, um, we talked about the picture frame, we talked a little bit about aspect ratios and those type of things. Um, so let's uh, talk about, um, you know, what, what are some things to, to, to know if you're, uh, how many, I was just curious out there, uh, uh, Tornado T just wrote down, um, let me read this here, let me go back on this thing here. Tornado T wrote down, uh, sounds like constant feedback loop uh, to get the scene just right. Yeah, you know, um, our, our work is really important in terms of what we're doing because um, I call it iterations, okay? And you can't fall in love with the drawings you're doing. If, if the drawing isn't right, you got to fix it yourself and have a, your own, uh, if the composition isn't right or you're not telling story. Because every shot that you're drawing needs to tell story. And, uh, uh, and it needs to be following the director's vision. It needs to be pushing the story along. And uh, we'll talk about that in a couple minutes. But 
there's a lot of iterations to what you're doing. So you'll go through so many iterations, you know, we don't usually get it on the first shot. There's there's you know, you want to make sure you, uh, that's why you'll see certain directors work with certain story artists or certain cinematographers all the time because they already have that knowledge and that that working relationship with each other already. And so they already sort of you know, see what's going on and uh, you know, in terms of what you're doing. Uh, and it makes it uh, makes it work really well. So, you know, uh, let's talk about storyboard artists and and you know, what it, what is it that you you need to know? And you know, how how do you go about you know practicing this craft? How do you go about learning more about this? And um, you know, that's why I'm trying to to have this YouTube channel as a resource for you. Uh, visual storytellers out there to help you and give you some some kickoff uh, and and hopefully I can continue building this channel and other resources for you uh, to be successful in terms of uh, your pursuit in uh, whichever discipline of visual storytelling uh, that you're going and uh, uh, we, we'd like I said we just started off this channel three months ago and I appreciate your support so if you're getting good value out of this information that I'm sharing with you uh, I, you know, I'd appreciate it that if you subscribe to the channel, you know, if you already are, I thank you very much. Throw a like down, throw a, a comment down in the comment section. Uh, it lets me know you're enjoying the work and you want to see more. And, uh, it helps to support me, uh, help this channel, uh, to help it thrive. So please, if you're watching this uh, live or you're watching this on the replay and you're finding the information I'm sharing valuable to you and you'd like to see more, I'd appreciate your support and uh, I'd appreciate uh, you subscribing. That lets me know that you're supporting the channel and like to see it continue. So thanks so much. I really appreciate that. So let's talk about if I'm starting off again, uh, Polly, what are those things that I need to know how to do? Because you can be the greatest artist in the whole world and uh, and, and not cross the finish line because they're not asking for one drawing or, you know, we're looking at a lot of these projects here, hundreds of drawings, a thousand drawings. I, I, I think I had written a note down somewhere like 1500 storyboard shots uh, for close encounters of a third kind. You know, it's just like, it, it, it takes a lot of shots to make these sequences work. And we're not even talking feature animation. Oh my goodness, there is probably thousands of images that are being created. And, and I, I've talked to a lot of my buddy, pro buddies, and it's like, nobody ever gets to see all that that lovely work. And I was um, showing you that that uh, that other that other uh, shot here of the, uh, where was it? It was, uh, excuse me. Get that back up. Where was that shot? Where is that shot? And like nobody. You know, everybody gets to see the final image. They don't get to see. Um... There you go. Get nobody gets to see the. Uh... Everybody sees the final image. They didn't get to see all the iterations of that image before you did it. They didn't get to see all the all the thinking work and all the stuff that you put together. And this is just for one shot, you know, and you're putting multiple shots together. Yeah, they don't get to see that. They don't get to see all the those uh, those initial images that you were putting together to 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 knock out that sequence. And this is just one of hundreds of shots that you would be doing. But anyways, um, let's go back and let's talk about if I were starting it all over again. What would I say to learn? So, add a new
What should I learn? What should I learn to become a storyboard artist? Okay, so I think there's a few things that, that you'd want um, to think about too. And I'm just gonna put this as a note. Think about what type of story board artist like to become okay so think about that um, there's all a lot of these disciplines they they're a lot alike but they're different in a lot of ways too do you want to be a live action Want to be a live action storyboard artist? Okay, do you want to do uh, meaning like uh, films, uh, streaming shows? Uh, do I want to do feature animation? Do I want to do um, uh, cartoon animation? You know, and then there's different, even 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 styles of it. You know, do I want to do uh, children's? Or do you want to do it for adult? And what I mean by that is that is that you know am I doing the you know uh, uh, was it Paw Patrol or uh, SpongeBob? Or am I doing Rick and Morty? Okay. Um, you know, when we're talking about films, am I doing, uh, you know, a feature film? You know, am I doing, a, you know, Lord of the Rings? Or am I doing a streaming show like Reacher? So, other things too is like, uh, are you doing uh, music videos? Are you doing um, corporate videos? Are you doing advertising? Thirty second ads. Are you working? You know, and this would be like an agency. You know. Are you working on video games? working on YouTube videos. Now are you other are you doing other types of visual storytelling? Are you doing comic books? 
which is different. Are you doing children's books? There's all these different scenarios that you can do. Um, you sort of got to pick what's the right flavor for you in terms of uh, what you're trying to be successful at. And there's so many different areas as you as a storyboard artist can get into or a visual storyteller. Uh, but let's, I'm going to focus on this main key area here um, for what uh, we're talking about here. And, and, and it can go for everything, but I, I, I would, I'm just going to sort of I'm going to focus right here, but you can use a lot of these things. For a lot, a lot of these same different aspects of what we're trying to do. Okay, so let's uh, duplicate that layer. So think about what type of storyboard artist that you would like to become. Okay. Okay, so what would the skills that I need to, to, to produce, uh, what, do, what do I need to be good at? Okay, and I would say So I'm, I'm, I'm Paul. You sit there and go, Paulie. What would what you? What do you need to be good at? Well, you got to really be good. <laughs> got to be really good at drawing. Okay. And what I what I mean by that is is you don't need to be a Da Vinci. You don't need to be Da Vinci, but you need to know how primitive shapes work and, and, and how to compose elements on, on your, your shot. Okay. So you need to know, uh, you need to know your primitive shapes. And, and you need to know how to move To make a solid composition, okay. And and what I, I would, and what I mean by that is, drawing takes time. Um, so we always sit there and go. Uh, some people are are just magically uh, born with the artistic talent. Um, uh, but this is a talent you can learn how to do. Um, and, and if you can draw a simple stick figure person, that that's great. Now, if you get a little bit more complicated, you know, and you can draw some simple primitive shapes, you can you can do that and, and circle, triangle, square, can you can you give it feeling you know can you give it dimension you know uh, you know I think there you know when we're talking perspective can you make all that stuff happen in in, in your drawing it's not even complicated I'm not even talking about sitting there drawing drawing a face of, of, of a woman you know we're not even talking about this type of you know You know, we can draw this stuff all day, you know. You 
you know, uh, we're, that's the next level of, of what we're talking about, uh, of drawing, but, you know, but we're, and then the other part of it too is, is composition. If we have our, composition do we you know if, if this person is is here we're talking about over the shoulder shot or something and the other character is here You know, do we have good composition? You know, do we understand composition? Do we understand uh, the the uh, intersecting of the rule? Of thirds, you know, do we know that? Do we know uh, the rule of thirds? Uh, do we know the golden ratio? Um, you know, uh, th those type of things. Do we know how to how to not break the 180 rule? Do do we know those things in terms of uh, good at drawing? You know, uh, do we know our perspective? You know, in terms of our horizon line, where is the camera to our eye? Those type of things, but but great. Composition is uh, is important, you know. All other things too is like, uh, and this is a great ass assignment for a lot of uh, new artists out there: is drawing one storyboard shot, and it tells a story. Because you know we're, we're talking about blocking and staging and all these other things, and we'll talk about film language in a minute, but. You know, I, I think it's it's really important, you know. So an assignment for you newer artists out there is, um, I'll just say home, homework. One good assignment would be tell us, tell a story in a single shot. Oops. And you can use something uh, that this is a great homework assignment. Tell a story in a single shot. I, I think it's a great way uh, to teach this um, type of how important each shot is. But there's there's a lot of um, interesting things that you can do. And there's a lot of if you go back and and look at early illustrators uh, in terms of what they were doing. Um, there's there's so much that you can learn. Um, from that single shot, uh, I was thinking of uh, the Family Circus. It was a comic strip. Look at your comic strips. Uh, Family Circus. Uh, what's in there? On the far side. Uh, there's there's a lot of them that are that are single panel and there's a lot of early illustrators that did single shot gags it might not have been a been a, a, a 16 by 9 movie rate you know aspect ratio but there's a lot to learn from uh, illustrators that have come before us of telling a story just in a single shot and I'm gonna write that down too because I think that would be sort of a fun um, uh, project you know to sort of work on as we're, we're learning these things single shot story and then one more for for Maria she was talking about aspect ratios 
those would be great videos to do and some uh, homework assignments for you guys but okay so uh, let's duplicate this and let's continue going on cool so I'm going to delete this I'm going to go back and write good at drawing So one, become good at drawing, okay? Number two, numero dos, okay, so what else should I be good at, okay? I think you have to have to have a great imagination. Okay. And I threw this one in because I think it's super important. Why do you need to have an imagination? Uh, because I think we need to tell stories in a new way. And there's a lot of things out there uh, that are going to start competing against storyboard artists and right now concept artists in terms of what we're doing. And that's the, the invent of this AI. Okay. And I have, I've seen a lot of the, the work of AI and I, and I think it's, it's difficult for a concept artist, you know, um, because you're getting all these prompts and you're inputting all these prompts and you're, you're generating all this material. And, uh, you know, I, I just, I, I know it's all computer learning and, and, and future stuff, but it's like, we go to the movies. We watch movies on our phone. We watch streaming televised shows. And we need great artists like you. Um, we need great storytellers. And we sit there and look at our basic story structures since the dawn of time and dawn of writing, whether it be Shakespeare, Greek stories, uh, stories that have come up through uh, different periods and different cultures. Um, and we interpret those stories and tell those stories in a new way. And you sit there and go, you know, when you start looking at movies and sit there and go, I've seen that before, I've blah, blah, blah. Uh, I, I think we need to push those boundaries. And that's where your imagination really comes into play. It's how far can you push this medium? You know, we started off with, uh, you know, drawing on caves. Then we went into drawing, you know, and, and uh, you know, whether it be through artwork of different styles, sculpture, painting, whatever, uh, Egyptian, you know, cuneiform and, and text writing. And, and, and then we went through the, the you know, Renaissance and we, we were, were learning mathematics and, 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 and drawing as realistic as we can and, and, and all these different aspects. And then we go, go into abstract art and we go into the invention of the, 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 the camera and taking a picture and we don't have to illustrate anymore or, or paint anymore and then we have the inventive of film and and filmmaking then we add sound to it and then we add you know uh, color to it then we add you know different dimensions and aspect ratios and then we do, then we create 3d fantastic graphics that anything is possible you need imagination and you, us artists can push this. I think as good as the stories that we could write, uh, you know, and creative on stories and, you know, push this medium as far as we can, whether if you're a, a, a live action storyboard artist, you're, a, you know, a, a feature film or you're a feature animation or you're a televised animation, we're here to, to push this as, as far as we can go. And that's the difference between a computer system figuring out and you as an audience member, you as an artist 
of what you really truly want to see. You know, um, I'm, I'm excited to be part of groundbreaking uh, new ways of, of, of doing things or a different perspective of doing things uh, and, and a different form, format of those things. But I think you need imagination in terms of how, how do you get imagination? And it's having that, that time to, to daydream, to look at films and look at content in a different way. It's um, challenging yourself. Don't do the same old thing, you know? If everybody's going left, go right, you know? Uh, trying different things in terms of uh, your craft, your visual storytelling, you know? Uh, you, you'll see certain filmmakers like Edgar Wright will come up with this really quick, snappy, if you've seen movies like uh, Shaun of the Dead or or uh, Hot Fuzz, and he has those zip, zam, boom, you know, uh, uh, shots and, and stuff. But you'll see that in other films now, you know, or or the uh, everybody doing the, the long master shot where, you know, you'll watch certain films and go, that was a good master shot from something that uh, Scorsese or Spielberg would do. And then you, you see it used everywhere and you see it done today, you know in terms of long shots, uh, long master shots, so they can cut down on production time and, and all those things are planned out. So how are you gonna change the industry in terms of your visual presentation of what you're bringing to the table as a storyboard artist? And I challenge all artists out there, um, go for it, you know, push, push the dial and, uh, you know, do something different. Do something unique that pushes this medium, makes it more entertaining. Uh, something new that uh, might be the same old thing, but it produced a new way to get your attention. You know, uh, I know a lot of technology. When you saw, uh, I remember when the Matrix first came out, and you saw Trinity, the uh, character, just run up on the wall and just start running around. You're like, oh my gosh, I've never seen that before. Or the first time, you know back on uh, Superman, the movie, when Superman is flying, and, and just like, there's certain things, or, you know, we, we, we take for granted if, uh, you know, if, if we've watched a lot of films and, and studied a lot, you know, in terms of what it is. But how, how do you get that imagination? I, I think it's by, um, you know, learning and, and, and seeing things in a new way. Um, be different. Be different. Push your art. Um, I, I would say read. Read a lot. Read screenplays. Read different things. Uh, my buddy Eric Yamamoto did a, um, uh, a uh, storyboard series uh, based on his rendition of the movie the Th John Carpenter's The Thing and I thought that was a really great uh, way of looking something and, and, and instead of just copying what's already been done and I know they came out with a, a, a reboot of the movie too uh, and you know I, w I would just say uh, I thought it was really exciting because he took that storyboard or that that that, that script and went and did it his own way and it was sort of fun because he sort of looked at what were the uh how, how, what his vision was when he was doing the boards how, how much did they equal to what the actual production was versus how many things he saw in a new perspective in terms of how he how he put that together i thought that was quite creative um another one like i said is just read when you're reading you're 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 seeing i always love uh I, when I was, uh, I got into the Harry Potter books. Uh, my wife uh, was teaching uh, elementary school, and uh, I, I really enjoyed uh, uh, those books. She would bring those books home, and uh, I started reading them. And it was su such a interesting thing when you finally went to the movie and you saw the movie. You sort of forgot about what you saw, and, or what you saw in your mind's eye when you read the book. And I, I remember reading, reading the, uh, especially the, the Prisoner of Azkaban, and boy, I saw a whole different movie in my head than what uh, the movie was actually produced. So uh, interesting stuff. So uh, read a lot. And uh, one thing I forgot to do is turn off this uh, other thing. So here we go. Cool. Um, so the, just that gives you some great ideas of uh, 
how to get that great imagination, go see art. Study artists. And great work. If all you can do is Google search uh, your favorite artists, uh, you know, um, or, uh, you know, I know I, I've been to Italy and I love going and seeing Renaissance art and things like that. But when it's different, your, your perspectives are different, you know. Maybe the drawing was really, really small. The sculpture was small, but you saw it in a book and it was like huge. And Or the vice versa. It was huge, but you see it only in a small format. And you're like, oh my goodness gracious. Um, you know, in terms of uh, the art we see. And uh, I think it's 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 important, you know. Uh, I remember going to a, a Van Gogh museum. You know, just, it, 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 or you go to the Louvre in, Fran in Paris. You know, there's just... See art, even if it's at your local art shop, uh, going to your local, uh, you know, what do you call it, Borders, or I don't know if Borders is still there. It's uh, your bookstore or whatever, and go go flip through the art books. Uh, get ideas. See new new ways of seeing things. Uh, help to help to kick off that inspiration of, of what you're doing. Okay, to continue on, so let me uh, duplicate this real quick, and I'll go to the next one. So like I said, become good at drawing, have a great imagination. Okay. Number three uh, that I would work on. Learn about story, okay? Um, we're a storyboard artist, and we're trying to become a storyboard artist. You need to know about storytelling, okay? Um, you know, what are the three acts? You know, act one, act two, act three. Uh, Uh, storytelling is, is is different for everybody but it's it's besides reading great books for you know to get to imagination but learn the art of storytelling you know what is the uh, let me just say three act structure okay uh, what what is a, uh, a, a you know what is a t you know a TV story structure uh, episodic stories Let me push that up a little bit and so so I think there's a lot out there um, I believe there was called uh, Save the Cat. I think it was that it. Let me pull it up real quick. I think it was just make sure. Yeah, Save the Cat. Um, Just bring it up real uh, by Blake Snyder. That's by Blake, by Blake Schneider. Uh, let me come up with a couple other ones. Um, Hero of a hero of a thousand faces. Uh, here, the hero with a thousand faces. Uh, 
That's by Joseph Campbell. I think he's a double L or single L. Yeah, Jason. Joseph Campbell. And, you know, you sit there and you look at films like Star Wars and, uh, you know, you have filmmakers like like uh, uh, George Lucas using that, that Joseph Campbell. There's only so many stories out there. And, you know, you, you're learning those main basic story arcs of, of what you're creating. Um, and I think another thing... is uh, Rick and Morty, one of the creators, Dan Harmon, uh, has his story cycle that I think is, is interesting. I, I, I like the dynamics of that. It's Dan Harmon. You can... Uh, You can catch that on like YouTube. It's not a book; it's just a, a video. And there's been a lot of commentary on it, but uh, telling the the basic uh, story structure. We might go over that. Let me write that down too. It's just like story structure. Another good video idea as we're talking. So. Um, just looking over here, Tornado T uh, just wrote up. Great stuff, Paul, taking uh, a lot of notes. Good, I'm glad. And if uh, you're getting great value out of this, please, uh, you know, I appreciate the support by subscribing to my channel. I'd really appreciate that. Let's me know you're enjoying what I'm sharing with you. And uh, if you're catching the replay too, I appreciate uh, uh, you uh, joining my channel by subscribing. It lets me know, hey, listen, Polly, I like what you're doing. Keep doing it. And uh, as I, I continue doing these videos, I feel like I'm getting better at better at trying to convey the information and, and hopefully it's, it's bringing you great value. Uh, throw down a like and uh, drop me a comment. Uh, I'd really appreciate it. So thanks so much uh, for being with us tonight. Got a lot of friends on tonight and uh, the, the, uh, the live stream is growing. So really appreciate everybody hanging out with me tonight. So, um, Right now, we're sort of talking about the basics of what it takes to, to be a good storyboard artist or what should I learn to become a storyboard artist. Uh, first, we talked about uh, become good at drawing. We went into that in detail. And then we talked about have, have a great imagination. Then three, we talked about learning story. Let me duplicate this and let's get on the next, uh, next point. Boop, boop. So the next, and those are some examples there, and you can research those or find those books, either at your bookstore or find on YouTube. Okay, so number four. Number four. So um, the next point, I would say, understand cinema, aka films, or also too um, for you, the, for those friends out there that are that love animation, learn about that stuff. Learn about the discipline, uh, or if you're a comic sequential artist. got to go into depth but I'm gonna really be focused on films you need to understand cinema and you can understand cinema watch movies watch movies if you're gonna make movies you sort of got to watch movies my friend and uh, you know you got it there's a lot of 
movie making out there. Uh, I, tonight, just for fun, we watched, what was it, the, the, was it the, the, what was it, which one did we watch? The Hitman's Bodyguard. The Hitman's Bodyguard, and uh, with Ryan Reynolds and Samuel Jackson and uh, Selma Hayek, and, uh, you know, we watched that movie, and it's like, I, I, it's not just that you watch a funny movie like that. Um, I'm a big Ryan Reynolds fan, and Samuel Jackson, and Selma Hayek, I love all those, those actors, but uh, just something funny to watch with them. But I, I'm talking about all films, not just older films or what's coming out today if you're into the uh you know uh what was it uh the barbie movie or um these other these other uh, christopher nolan movies uh, uh or star wars or whatever go 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 back in time go back into hitchcock uh go back into old westerns john wayne uh you know uh go back to uh uh, Kurosawa films, you know, um, there's so much to learn from film history, uh, you know, to, to today's films. And you can see each generation of filmmaker, a Fellini film or whatever it might be, uh, have a, a you know, a, a wide, uh, you know, uh, a portfolio of skill set and knowledge of watching these films. One thing is to watch a film uh, and enjoy a film, uh, to, to enjoy it for entertainment. Enjoy it. Watch the film. Have fun with it. If you've never seen uh, uh, a, Star, uh, a Star Trek uh, movie, watch it. If you haven't seen Blade Runner, go watch Blade Runner. If you've never seen Predator, go watch Predator. Enjoy the film. Uh, Bed Dobbs and Broomsticks, go watch the film, you know, and enjoy it. But I, I challenge you at home... To learn about the craft of filmmaking because as a storyboard artist that's what we're doing we're we're, we're we're doing the blueprint of a film if you don't know film language and you don't know what a extreme wide shot is versus a wide shot versus a close-up uh versus a cut in or a bird's eye view or uh what a, what is a pan what is a tilt uh you know uh you know uh, what are, what are different lighting scenarios uh color composition uh you know and and and, and all those different things you know it's not like uh i'm being hired to do a, a martial arts sequence I, I better know how those work you know i better have seen a lot of you know fight sequences you know uh and and this type of things and and i, I think it's fun because when you're working with a director you're working with a client and they're like uh, yeah, I always joke around. What was it? The uh, the Jack and Jill Adam Sandler movie, Jack and Jill, and uh, they're like, oh, you you know the movie, that movie, and, and no matter what, I guess Jack and Jill couldn't get it right. Uh, Adam Sandler characters couldn't get it right, and then the other guy comes up as a Star Wars. But anyways, you're always figuring out. Uh, you have likeness, like. Uh, I'm trying to get the setting like uh, the original Ridley Scott Blade Runner. Uh, it's always raining. I want that atmosphere, you know what I mean? Uh, or I want uh, the composition of my shots to be like Wes Anderson. Or in, you have to know um, not only your film language, you got to know directors and you have to know um, different ways, you know, um, a, a film is, is made and then there's different things that make emotion and you, you want your audience to feel something, you know, we were already talking about before to, to produce something different, but how do you produce something? You, you have to, have, we're telling stories, you know, you sit there and you watch a film and you, and you're like, wow, I'm really crying about it. Why am I crying over this silly movie? Uh, and, uh, I, I was, I'm not going to give it away, but I was watching the, the last ep episode, uh, of the Reacher show and the, the ending was like, it got me. It was like, you became attached to a certain character and, and you're like, oh my, yeah, I'm not going to tell you the story or what happened if you haven't seen it, but I'm like, oh man, you know, it, it made you feel something. And it's like, I don't mean to be making fun of myself, but I'm like, that's just an actor on the screen. That's just somebody's story. That's just that. And it made you feel something. It's like, uh, it's, uh, there's a, I know there's a part and hook between uh, uh, Dustin Hoffman's hook, Captain Hook character and this little boy. And every, man, it gets me every time. He's talking about fathers and sons and it just, it gets me every time I watch the damn movie. Or, uh, 
you're sitting there and I'm watching my buddy Jean-Claude Van Damme doing something, uh, doing his famous spinning back kick or whatever he's doing, you know, and uh, it always makes me feel like, oh, let's go out and go, go go out there and kick some butt today, you know what I mean? It's like, um, why do these movies make you feel that way? And the challenge for you, uh, you know, out there doing storyboards, break that sequence down. How did... And, and redraw that and use that formula, whether if you're just simply just copying the movie, uh, but how do you take those aspects of, you know, how did that make you feel? And that's where your visual storytelling will come into to, um, to a, a big play because you'll have such a repertoire of film knowledge, uh, not only on the construction of how a film is made, I think you need to know the whole production cycle. You know, what does the producer do? What does the director do? What does the, you know, what does the stunt coordinator do as a production designer? What does the cinematographer do? You sort of have to have all those aspects because you're part of that team if you're working in live action. So you need to know everybody's role on, on all that stuff too. Let me go back to my little uh, note capture here. So so we, we, want, we want, my suggestion is to watch movies, you know, uh, Know your movie, your film history. Uh, no. Films are made. What is the production pipeline? Um, you know, you need to know uh, your, your film shots. Angles. Camera moves. Come on, Penn. Good. Let's slow down here. Camera. Camera moves. You need to know lighting. Um, what else? Uh, look at films. made you feel something how did they do that You know, I sit there and I can remember being in the theater watching Empire Strikes Back and uh, Darth Vader goes and cuts off Luke's hand. You're like, oh my God, you know, it's like, and then when the big announcement, I am your father, you're like, no, it's like, no way, you know, and uh, these are all, 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 why did it make you feel that way, uh, you know, uh, and uh, it, it's just cool things or even when, you know, uh, Obi-Wan Kenobi, young Obi-Wan Kenobi goes and and he's uh, 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 he's fighting with uh, Darth Maul and all that other stuff, you know, uh, that or, you know, uh, how, how did that make you feel, you know, uh, with the, the race uh, for Indiana Jones to find the Ark of the Covenant, you know, or how did it make you feel when you're watching Richard Dreyfus? In, in the uh, in the, his truck and all the lighting and the mailboxes are going all over the place. How did that make you feel? Um, so so good stuff. But I think uh, wa watching movies uh, and understanding cinema is so so important. Uh, let me go back to the chat here real quick. So uh, so Tornado T said uh, sounds like a constant feedback loop on a scene to just get it right. Yeah, it, it takes a lot. It takes a lot of iterations. Um, 
uh, let's see, Tornado 2, great stuff, Paul, taking lots of notes. Uh, the Idiot Archive, I'm definitely revisiting this stream. This seems really informative. Yeah, I try to give as much as I can, my friend. I uh, appreciate you joining in. And uh, please, yeah, go back and watch this live stream once I'm, I'm done here. But then also, too, uh, I, I have over, I think, 35, going on pretty much close to 40 uh, sessions here on live sessions. We go over sketching. We go over the fundamentals of uh, mastering the basics of storyboarding. And then we have our jam sessions where I'm just uh, jamming, having fun storyboarding. Uh, Kalfi, uh, hello, Paul. Hey, how's it going? Good for you to join. Thanks for joining in. Really appreciate you joining in, taking the time to hang out with me tonight. Thanks so much. Uh, and then Maria says, Godzilla minus one, uh, made me, uh, uh, maybe sob uh, like twice, lots of laughs. Yeah, I haven't seen that one yet. Uh, I haven't, I have to watch that. I haven't gotten a chance. I'm a big Godzilla fan, uh, from the back in the day. Uh, uh, I, I'm always, uh, you know, I, I think I've drawn, let me, let me see, let me grab a image real quick uh, from Maria here. I, I'm, I'm like the biggest Godzilla fan. Where's my... Godzilla image there. I'll throw this up for uh, for you, Maria. <laughs> this is off my storyboard page. There you go. There's your Godzilla picture. I love Godzilla. I I, I love uh, you know that that, that uh, particular icon. Uh, I have I have a buddy that works over at ILM and he does all the uh, uh, creature I guess. Uh, Dort on Kong Skull Island. He works for Island. Mean, he does all the, uh, not necessarily the rigging, but he does the rigging for all the musculatures and breathing apparatus and stuff for the characters. Great guy and, uh, you know, just uh, fun stuff. So one of these days I get to work on one of these movies. <laughs> That'd be awesome. <laughs> cool. Uh, can't wait to see the new Godzilla movie. Yeah, I love it. Uh, and, uh, you know, I, I'd love to be a, a part of that. Uh, uh, or is it, is, uh, give me a second. That wrong person. I'm always talking to Aaron, so uh, joking around. He was joking around that image I just showed. He's a storyboard artist. He's worked on a lot of the, uh, a few of the Godzilla and Kong movies and stuff. And I always tell Aaron, I saw, man, give me a holler one of these days. I got to work on one of those films. That'd be fun. <laughs> I love that. There's a, I guess there's a new Kong and uh, King Kong and Godzilla movie coming out. But watch those movies. Um, have fun with those. Have fun with watching movies, understanding cinema in terms of uh, what we're talking about. And uh, let me see what else here. I, and I think it's important too, um, on a couple things too, um, when you're looking at this um, for watching movies, because I'm gonna put it in here. I think it's important for you to learn because then you can do sequence design. Because remember, we're just not drawing image by image by, or just an image in a sense. We're drawing images that tell a story and each shot needs to count. And we're putting that together, you know, in terms of a, 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 a sequence and things like that. And uh, the other the other reason why I, I was talking about the production pipeline, I'm going to put a little arrow down here, is you always need to be thinking about budgets. You know, is, is this an indie film? Is this a box office? Or, or this is a, is this a streaming? 
show. Um, is this a box, you know, big box office? I think by you knowing the production pipeline and, and, and those costs, you understand how money works. And there might be something that you're not going to storyboard because it's just too cost, it's not cost effective or it's too expensive to do. And you need to know that production pipeline and know those things already um, so you can be successful at what you're doing and, and, and that you're not wasting your time as a storyboard artist too, uh, putting up a bunch of stuff. Well, when it comes to like animation or cartoon animation or feature animation, yeah, I, I can do a lot of crazy cool stuff. But in a uh, an indie film, if I'm doing a small budget indie film where they might have uh, a certain actor attached to it that, that has a name, or it might not be anybody we know, um, and uh, you know, am I working? What was it? The the conductor uh, with Peter Dinklage? Uh, I think it was called the conductor. You know, um, there there's different films that are small little films. You know, and uh, they just don't have big budgets for them. And uh, you have to be very conservative of, of what you're doing and how you're making that film. You think of something like Tarantino doing Reservoir Dogs and, you know, everything is, 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 is either in that diner sequence or it's in the uh, that main uh, warehouse sequence where most of that movie takes place. And it's like you're cutting down on sets, you're cutting down on all those things. And then you get into his epic films like The Hateful Eight or uh, Inglorious Bastards or uh, Django uh, you know, um, you know, into those other films, you know, um, a TV series is going to be at a different budget than a, a feature film, you know, it, it's, it's all those things, even, even with movies that are sky is a limit, you, you know, how many effect shots can we afford? You know, those are all the things where that, uh, that filmmaking knowledge and, uh, production. So again, you know, super important stuff, uh, in terms of, uh, what we're doing. And then uh, let me back this off a little bit, add a couple more points, and we'll finish it up for the night. Let me uh, duplicate that layer. OK. Then you're asking, Paul, what else would I want to know? OK. These are some extra things I would put in there. I think you need to be a great communicator, okay? Um, our craft is about communicating story through visual elements, but you also have to be clear in your words and you have to be concise and you have to ask a lot of questions. Um, I think working with a, uh, a director, you're, you're there to pull if, if something or you're working with a new director or you're working with um, something that's complicated, you need to ask as many clear, concise, poignant questions uh, that you can. And um, you have to have clarity. You have to have beyond point because um, you know, I just think those are, are, are super important aspects because you're communicating through your visuals to the rest of the team for this blueprint for your storyboards and your or your sequence for that uh, you know for your team or whatever you need to have good communication and your communication skills need to be really really strong and if you're somebody who's shy you need to be able to get out of your you know out of your comfort zone 
and be able to be not that you're you know bounced off the walls but you need to be able to communicate with other individuals uh if you feel strongly about this or that or to help you know the production of what you're trying to do also you need to be you know um you need to be ready to have your work revised we were talking about that earlier um you know you need to be able to to be able to take uh you know, uh, notes and uh, be able to get feedback and take feedback clearly without emotion. You're there to help bolster your project and get it, you know, to work where the vision is. So sometimes you're right on the money. Sometimes it might take a couple iterations to get that going. But I think uh, clear and concise communication are, are critical. Um, you need to learn business. Uh, this is if you're a contractor or a freelance. You need to know you need to know how the business works, and you need to be able to protect yourself and be able to uh, you know uh, run your business. Uh, I, I think uh, when you you make a deadline, you're going to hit your deadline. Uh, it's always those those things. Uh, you're your own business, and if you want to keep working, it's one thing to get the job, but if you want to uh, keep working, you better be all over that. It's that under promise, over deliver. Always give a little bit more than what you're being asked to do. Um, if, and I think it's super important to know have your business acumen and uh, treat yourself as a business. Uh, Put value on to the work you're creating, the services that you're providing, and uh, and drive drive yourself. You know, uh, you are your own business. Your director, your 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 client is your client. And uh, if you want to continue working in this uh, industry or in these type of projects, you need to be able to produce the results that everybody is looking for. And uh, and I always say. Uh, you know, under promise, over deliver, and uh, deliver more than what you're being asked to do. Um, people re will remember that, and uh, you know, and that's what'll keep you going. But I think learning business is there, and then number seven, have fun, and always be learning. Okay, I think that is critical, you know, how fun in what you're doing. It is, I think it is an honor to work and a privilege to work in the entertainment industry, no matter if you're doing feature film, feature animation, uh, a live action show, you're doing uh, cartoons, you're working in uh, music videos, or corporate videos or YouTube videos or comics or whatever you're working on, whatever your visual storytelling is, it's an honor to be able to work in this environment. And it, I take a privilege each and every day I get to work on something special and, um, and, and you keep going. And, uh, but have fun. Uh, be somebody that people want to work with and, uh, and share and, and learn. Uh, I, I, there's countless board artists out there that I communicate with, and, and it's just a great group of people. Everybody is so supportive, and uh, it, it's it's interesting with the live action scene. How many people I only know via through online. I've never physically gotten to meet yet, but I'm looking forward to meeting so many people. Uh, and you try to hook up at conventions and other places uh, to hook up with a lot of your buddies out there, and. Uh, you know, it's just have fun, enjoy that, be good to good to be good to other people, and then finally, always be learning. I'm always learning. I'm always practicing. I'm always pushing my craft. I'm always doing as much as I can do uh, to be successful as a storyboard artist, and it doesn't stop. This is a I'm a lifelong learner, and uh, you know, you're, I think you should always challenge yourself and learn more and as much as you can. So. With that said, uh, just a quick little recap. We went over a lot of stuff tonight. But again, uh, what should I learn to become a storyboard artist? 
become good at drawing, have a great imagination, uh, learn story, learn about storytelling, understand cinema, be a great communicator visual, visually and by your words, learn business, and have fun, and always be learning. Again, my name is Paul Angeli. I am a live action storyboard artist, and uh, I hope you enjoyed the live stream today, and I enjoyed having you with me today. So thanks for coming in and hanging out with me. Um, and uh, if you enjoyed what you saw today, please uh, subscribe. I'd really appreciate that, and I'd appreciate your support. If you're watching this on the replay and you got a lot of value out of this replay, again, I invite you to support me by subscribing to the channel. Drop a like. Uh, don't When you're subscribing, don't forget to hit that notification button so you can be reminded of when my next stream is. Uh, today's Tuesday, so I'll have another stream on Thursday and this coming Saturday. So we'll be sketching together on Thursday and sketching after hours. And I look forward to seeing you then. Uh, go through the rest of those uh, playlists that I have on my channel uh, to catch up. Uh, there's a lot of great information there and uh, have some fun with that. And uh, my friends, I thank you for watching, and I will catch you on the next live stream. Have a great night. Maria, thanks for hanging out. We'll see you next time. Uh, and everybody that joined on, Tornado T, uh, Mr. Grinch, and Maria, Maria, Spicer, Andreas, HMT. Uh, who else did I have there, too? Um, Cafe, um, the, the Idiot Archive. Thanks for everybody joining me today. Really appreciate it having, uh, hanging out with me tonight. Thanks for taking time out of your busy day to visit Old Polly. So anyway, look forward to seeing you all in the next uh, live chat. Till then, take care and have a great night.